All right, before we get to the show, uh, big news. Spike's Car Radio is recording live with ABC's Michael Strahan at the Pebble Beach Concours up in Monterey. That's taking place August 25th on Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Spike's Car Radio on stage. You can buy tickets. All money goes to charity. It's going to be awesome. I bet you didn't know that Michael Strahan is a huge car fan but also a big car collector he's going to come and uh he's going to share it all with us the types of cars he buys uh what he likes about driving and uh oh i bet he's got a bunch of really good hanger secrets too and uh you know and where the car thing started for him so that's uh, spikes car radio live up at the pebble beach concours with michael strahan so that's saturday august 25th at 1:30. Um, just go to pbclassiccarforum.com, pbclassiccarforum.com, like Pebble Beach, classiccarforum.com, and buy your tickets. And remember, all proceeds go to charity. It's me, um, maybe Zuckerman. I guess we'll have him up there. And uh, former New York Giant and uh, ABC big-time morning host Michael Strahan. You know, everybody's got a to-do list. Drop off the dry cleaning, pick up some milk. Here's an idea. Let's add save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. And the good thing is you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. All you have to do is go to geico.com, and in 15 minutes you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. Extra money in your pocket. It just may be the most rewarding to-do you do today. Now Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio. A downloadable Cars and Coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Spike's Car Radio, ladies and gentlemen. We got a good show. Zuckerman sitting here. Um, it's a nice, warm afternoon in L.A. We got Bobcat Goldthwait, comedian. I've never met Bobcat. Have you? I thought he was dead, but that's the other <laughs> guy. <laughs> I guess that's Sam no. Kinison. Sam Kinison, he's everybody has that celebrity that they think when they see him in public they go like Sam Kinison, right? Right, it's like that Ryan Reynolds. That and the must other be guy. his. That must yeah. that's got to be his. Yeah. Who's Ryan Reynolds? Well, you know Ryan Reynolds has some other doppelganger who's in other. I don't know. right. I remember there was Tom Bosley back in the day, and sure. then the dad from Eight Is Enough. Who's that guy? Another guy. You remember him? Yeah. Everybody has that other guy. That's really Dick funny. Dick Van Patten. Dick Van Patten. Right. Tom Bosley died. Can you believe right. I remembered that? There you go. I don't know. I I don't remember anything that happened. Someone today. should really put together a, a book of uh, of those pairings. Yeah, was, well, <laughs> didn't they have separated at birth in a magazine? Well, you know who the bigger ones are: uh, The Rock. And uh, that that goofball guy from the, uh, the, uh, the 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 Fast and the Furious series, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Those guys. Those get guys confused. hate each other. Though. Yeah, be, I think because they get confused like that in public, and people one will come is, up and, to the other. And, and go, one is, you know, as my grandmother would say, one is normal and one is ACDC, and she <laughs> and she do her hand up and down. Really, which one? I'm not saying. How, how do you know this? I, I'm, I'm saying that that's the rumor, like gerbils, but that didn't really happen. You know. <laughs> It, it might not be true. Who cares? Oh, my God. Look, Zuckerman, you're just starting off <laughs> by making accusations. But it's uh, it's Vin Diesel, right? That's, that's your <laughs> – right? That's the one that would make sense, right? Well, I, I don't want to mess with either of these guys, by the way. This is all Zuckerman. Maybe Zuckerman. Vin will come here and put you in a, an angry, sweaty embrace. So we're in this heat wave, Zuckerman. You and I both have no – no one's going to feel sympathy for us. But anyways, it's been a, it's been a, a problem. I get in. I I realized I had the old Series Two A uh, in my oh. driveway, which I can't drive. It's got nothing, you know. So I'm in the uh, the 2015 GT3, my blue car, Bruiser. Okay, right. rattling noises coming from the right seat. It's Why? got sport buckets. Oh, sport buckets. So it's making me, it's making me crazy. And I had to go to the dentist this morning, so I thought it was my little mouth guard rattling. And I went, oh, it's the mouth guard. Put it in my pocket. No, it was not the mouth guard. It was still coming. Do you, you know what the sport bucket looks I like? Know. Okay, as you go up to the top where it says GT3, right. there's a pad there. And then there's four holes right. r- with plastic surrounds. Right. And I bang on the head headrest, and it goes, Brrr. something's vibrating in there. You got to go to Harry, the Armenian. There's nothing there, dude. There's two pieces, two trim pieces that come together front and back. And then, of course, Porsche doesn't use regular screws. Right? They have to use that stupid star screw thing. Do you know, like, 
Why do they do that? Why can't they just use a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver so I can go in and tighten this stuff up? Because they expect that the average Porsche owner, when he hears that, is just going to buy a new car. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I, you and I did. Yeah. We did do that. Oh, geez, there's a noise. Buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> but I was ex- – so I made a little note to myself on my phone. I said, Siri, t- remind me to fix this when I get home. I'll go at it. And then when I went to get coffee, I realized I, I can't wait even till then. It's 2 o'clock Horrible. now. I can't even wait till 6. I'm going to look in the back, and there's that stupid screw piece. You're not, so now- well, you're not worried about Siri listening to everything you say? Well, that's a different thing. So here's what I did. I I got on Amazon and I ordered, and I'm sure I have one of these already. One of the uh, you know star key set for twenty nine bucks. I said, please deliver this right away tomorrow, so it's going to come there. I had one at the office. Could have bought it to you. Well, I I just figured this thing out, and I'm hoping you know tonight. I know I know myself. Tonight I'm going to go home. I'm going to find whatever tools I have to try to tighten this stuff up. The problem is. Because it sounds like a baby rattle. You remember the old plastic rattle with two pieces I of plastic there. inside I when it goes there. like that? My guess is even if I tighten this stuff up, pull it apart, and reinstall it, I'm still going to have that sound. And the seats are made of nothing. There's nothing there. Carbon fiber, right? They're carbon fiber yes. buckets? Yes. They make noises. And, and sometimes I had one car that they made creaky noises in as if the material was delaminating in some way. There was a, you know, somebody asked me a great question on Instagram. We're not, we're not doing question and answer, really. But I thought I would bring it up if I have time, and I, have, I do have time. Bobcat's a little late right now. He said, and see if I can find this. I get so many questions. This is funny, you know. Every we, day. We... But listen to this question, Zuckerman. It was a good question. This guy was putting a lot of money into his car, and if I can find it, I can tell you which car. I probably won't. But his question was, when, when do you call it quits with a car? When do you go, you know what, I'm done? To your point, when do I go, I put enough money into this thing, and now I want out? And this is – it's an emotional decision because you will – and it's a really great question because invariably you are going to be too deep in by the time you come to that realization. And you're all – it's, it's such an admission of losing and a decision. Yeah. <laughs> it's a waving a right, well, white flag and deciding that you are not going to lose any worse. Right. And the sooner the better, but you have to get to the point where you realize it's a loss. Get out. Just get out, right? Just get out. I've I don't know. I have conflicted feelings about it because it's, you know, it reminds me of the old question of like, when, when, are you, when is Hollywood done with you? I'll t- it's never done with you. You pull yourself out when you're too emotionally destroyed and chewed up by the job, right? right? But that's how it okay. works. So but with you, this car, that's what he's saying. He's so emotionally screwed up by it, he wants to walk away. And you know where I see this the most? Why the the restored cars are always for sale a month after they're done. The guy who paid to restore the car is so battle weary. He's so disgusted. He's so sick and tired of having been plucked like a chicken. Right. That he, the minute it's done, he sells it. Right. And he when he gets in the car, he's carrying all that emotion and, yeah, in with him, and he the can't car. enjoy it. He hates the experience. See, that's you know, why you have to buy a good car to begin with. This reminds me of fishing, Zuckerman. I. Don't like to eat what I what I catch. I don't like seeing the guy. I don't like catching it. I don't like killing it and skinning it. I'll do all those things, but I would rather serve it to you because if I eat it, I remember all the steps I took to get here. Well, you say uh, I, I've always <laughs> been. Make, well, yes. Do you see what I, I mean? Rather than it, I would I would have you do all that work and just and hand me that piece I of bluefish. I like the product, not the process. Right. It's the product that I like, not the process. And I and I enjoy when we take a car that is going to be perfect but needs another few percentage points of tinkering. But the really deep work, the the really deep stuff that that is underestimated as to cost and underestimated as to time. Yeah. I hate that experience. So there, there is your answer. Here, I can simplify it for you. You really have to have an appetite. You really have to be rested and ready to embark on any sort of restoration or car that needs work. You got to be emotionally prepared for it like you would train for a marathon. If you are not, if your life is busy, if your family if has needs, you have so, small children that take up your time, buy something that's done and, and done take it right. the last few percentage points up. 
but that's it. And don't buy the car that has only five miles after re- after the restoration. No, no, no. The old, you need 400. Uh, that, that, the rule I heard from Sirio, which I guess is the rule, is the 110-100 rule. Drive a mile, do a punch list. Drive 10 miles, do a punch list and fix. Drive 100 miles, do a punch list and fix, and then take delivery. Well, Bobcat is here. I'm seeing him walk in right now. Remember is we he talk- ready to remember come in? We, remember when we talked about Cat Bob? Cat Bob? <laughs> and now we have Bobcat. Now we have Bobcat. Oh, <laughs> yes. yeah, look at that. Hey, man. How are you? <laughs> yeah, right over here. Come and sit down. Very nice to meet you. This Thanks. is uh, Paul Zuckerman, my co-host. How I'm are Spike. you? Nice to meet you. So, uh, who is Cat Bob? <laughs> oh, well, that that's a long story. <laughs> that's right. a long it's Porsche a, story. But, about uh, a guy who loved his cat more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. In New York. And... Uh, once, uh, what did he, he made an emergency landing at Teterboro Airport with a, in a private aircraft. They said it was a medical a emergency. They didn't specify that it was for a cat. <laughs> I would do that. Just if, to take care of his cat. If something ever happened to uh, Anderson Cooper, or uh, that's my cat. No, I mean, it, I would care about Anderson Cooper, the man, too. But You named it, your cat Anderson Cooper? Yeah, yeah. Well, Cooper, P-U-R-R. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, he's a silver fox. Mm-hmm. You know, I had him for a while. I was oh, you're Anderson Cooper. Cooper, That's obviously, hilarious. and then his sister, who's black and white, is uh, Alice Cooper. There you, <laughs> you know what, people? You know, you know what car heads love? Cat talk. They do. <laughs> they, I'm sure they everybody do. likes cat talk. This is a car and comedy podcast. Right, so we okay. vacillate wildly between. I was cars trying to think and... about cars, and I don't. You know, for years I had a, a, a 1970 Cutlass Supreme mm-hmm. that I love. That car. I'm not a car guy, but that one, I, I you know. Oh man, I drove it to the into the ground, and on purpose because you know it was the big block and you know the engine was a four forty. So it was, mm-hmm. a, it, and I didn't do anything to the exterior because I didn't want it to get stolen or I didn't care. You know what I mean? But right. your, your <laughs> urban assault vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> it was a you know leopard skin seat covers. <laughs> really had, sounds oh, great. Oh yeah, wow. yeah, and then just be with a big cowboy hat, smoking a cigar. One day I pull up into. A, 7-Eleven and this guy who looks like a doppelganger for me like and he's got a, a tie on and a suit and he's just you know he's had it you can tell from work and he's like how much I go for what he goes the car the hat the cigar <laughs> all of it and I go it's not for sale man he goes yeah I know I know the wet. <laughs> he wanted your wet nub yeah, down yeah, to the yeah, wet yeah, nub yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. I want your life uh, That's a real car thing, though. When you see somebody else in a car you like, you just want to be that person. But it's a trap. Is it? Why it's is a, it a trap? trap? It's a compare-despair like, trap. Well, because <laughs> you believe in that's that in, in the fantasy of happiness. He looked at right. you and said, that guy's happy. He doesn't well, know. But he could see that I, I, I really didn't give a rat's ass. Right. So <laughs> I, I think that's what he wanted. Right. You know? And I, I do miss that car, uh, and uh, I, I just recently, oddly enough, I, I was looking up similar ones. But uh, See, there you go. Yeah. Well, you seem like a car guy. You're into well, it. As much, I mean, it doesn't mean that you, you know, you're breaking engines down like Leno. You just have to have a love <laughs> of these things, <laughs> a love of comedy. Do you know what moment I realized that that was a trap was when, I was when Jerry and I were driving an identical green 911 side by side on the 101? And mine had fewer miles and was more original. And I looked over at him and I go, someday I want to buy that car. <laughs> right. That's I went, oh, sure. there it is. Right. The, There's the compare, despair, spelled right out. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the 101 and I see something that looks like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or something. <laughs> and I go, oh, that's Leno. Of course. And it always <laughs> is. It always is. Steam and goggles <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and ridiculousness. It really is. <laughs> it, 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 He's like, great. After you, you, it, it's, it's been, it's, by the way, that's happened at least. At least five times. Yeah. But, no, you know, for sure. Or it'll be like a crazy kit car, you know what I mean? That's like, yeah. you know, I don't know what it is, you know. Uh, it is like, uh, it's like, <laughs> it's like a Ferrari from Guardians of the Galaxy, right. you know. It's right. like, what, what is this thing? And, uh, and I, I go, hey, what is it? Oh, I said, it's not a real car. It's like, you know, I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I did, you're not helping me, it, you know. Right. And, and it's just uh, some Frankenstein vehicle. No, every week it's something different. Yeah. When I, every time I go, what do you got that's new? He goes, hey, check it out. I got a tank. That's what he said last time. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. Was I, it a tank? A what? He goes, a tank. I can drive it on the highway. It goes 60 miles an hour. It's got a 30 <laughs> millimeter machine gun in it. Some guy in the CIA gave it to me. Went, well, that's hey, a lot of information. That is <laughs> a For, new series, yeah. Comedians and Tanks. Anyway. Yeah. Man, look at this. I'm down uh, escaping the wow. heat this weekend. You got uh, having. You know where this hits Saturday. me. Saturday. This is the LA Times. This is your article in the LA Times. This hits me at the 
at the perfect moment. It's uh, Sunday at uh, nine a.m. I'm in. A, a, I'm out <laughs> in the patio at a ho- nice hotel with my son because our air conditioning is broken in L.A. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And they say, "Here's the newspaper, sir, and here's a pot of coffee." And you know, this is probably the first newspaper I've read in a year. Yeah, I, I have not it. seen the tactile <laughs> copy of that story. And here's, and, and you go, good. I haven't done any of my research. Well, that's the first thing that, re- that <laughs> reminded me. Like, oh, geez, this guy's coming on the show. I better read this. His wicked touch finds the right spot. Ah. And this very nice piece on it's you a with a nice lovely piece. photograph. It it's made me nice. love newspapers again. It's uh, I, I like wicked touch. <laughs> I guess the, the headline guy's this? from Boston. But He's was... got a wicked touch. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Are you from pisser. Massachusetts, too? No, but I lived in Boston for uh, a, a period when I was a young man doing stand-up. Wild. Well, you've got you're out there promoting a new show, right? This Correct, is Misfits yeah. and Monsters, a new anthology series promoting. Well, I'm promoting Sharp Objects. It's very. Uh, it's, oh, okay. It's weird. I mean, I'm not on that show. I just watched the first one. It's really good. No, yeah, I am promoting Wait, what? my show. <laughs> That's okay. You like that? Yeah, you know, of course. You get you to like a point that. where you go, ah, my show. Yeah, yeah. But did you see Sharp Objects? Yeah, yeah it was good. I think I before, found a new show. Before we get into that. You know, I used to write for Letterman, so of course I went, you know, I always do research on my guests, and I, I love watching the early stuff. And with you, my entry point is that first appearance in 1983 on yeah, David Letterman. Yeah, I was 20 Letterman. years old. Were you 20 years old? 20 years old. And the funny, Letterman doesn't go, you know, this guy is a young comedian, and he's just like, this is like the weirdest thing we've well, seen in a while, kind of. This is one of the strangest... <laughs> <laughs> Comedians we've seen in a while is yeah, what he said. Yeah. That's how he introduces 1983. You know. But that was like – now, when did you work on the show? I don't, I don't come onto that show until 1990. Okay. But, so but, but my love for television begins with that early shows, Letterman show. It's yeah, like when yeah. you'd see Brother Theodore and right. people like me. And, yeah. Uh, the first night I was on was Camping with Barry White Knight. It was way – That's right. <laughs> it was a little more um, – Edgy, huh? Not edgy. It was more surreal. It was right. more like uh, like Ernie Kovacs. It right. was kind of just peculiar, uh, you know. But everybody, everyone in late night, if they're any good, uh, uh, metamorphosizes. You know, like like you know, like I used to direct the Kimmel Show, uh, and uh, Jimmy was always funny, and he's a great guy. But you know, he's turned into something else. Yeah, you know? yeah. But but. Uh, and Dave did too. Dave's interviews changed. You know, it used to be a little nerve wracking, and he was slightly hostile. And then he he changed too. But, but that's what that's what I noticed in this. So right, right. The, you should watch this clip. You should check it out on YouTube. <clears throat> It's your very first. You're 20 years old. He introduces you, and it's that <laughs> old Dave that I forgot about. That's you know, and I worked on the show. I forgot about this Dave, yeah. the very low key guy who's just going. All right, well, uh, we're going to bring out this guy. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, a little bit of Carson, but also a little depressed. <laughs> like, how long has he been on the air at that point? When did that show start? It would probably in eighty. It, it was in. It had been on not that long, like maybe a year or two, because he had come from the daytime. Right, show. right, okay. So that's and the and the 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 studio is dark. The mood is really late night, like late at night. Yeah. The show is so good. And then it's the, so the, good. But the last episode of the daytime show, he was being replaced by some right. card game. Yeah. And then he had all the cards come out and dance. Like he had a kick line. <laughs> it was I remember like yeah. being like I you know, now I'm like in that eighteen or nineteen and I was uh uh uh, I was like really hung over, and yeah. I, but I'm laying on my mom's couch, <laughs> hung over in a fever, and there's dancing cards. It was almost like a hallucination. But you know what's funny? We we're talking about. I think that's the process. If you're going to exist, you have to find out who what works. And what reminded me of this when I just started promoting something I wasn't in. Uh, Keenan, Keenan, uh, was it Keenan Wayans that had a talk show? Right. Mm-hmm. There's uh, uh, and. Uh, by the time I did the show, I knew he was just over. He was just going to do this obligation. And I and I went on and I promoted a, a movie I wasn't in. It's called Slappy and the Stinkers. <laughs> Five kids, one scene line, no rules. And and, and they show good. the clip. And, he, and, he, and I, I genuinely think he, did, he at that point wasn't doing research because or he just sold the hell out of it because you're not in that clip. I go, yeah, I, I don't have anything to promote. That's just, great. But That's uh, a funny bit. I always tried to pitch that bit on the show, but really? now I'm glad that we isn't never it, did it because you already did it. But yeah. no, but isn't it weird like pitching? Uh, 
it is strange from the other side when you pitch an idea for a talk show appearance. Like I was on Johnny Carson never wanted me on and as a as a defiant act just before she quit guest hosting, she had me on as a guest. Mm-hmm. And so I came on and I just came on in top hat and tails and um and I started crying. I was introduced as a dog act, and I explained that my dog got hit by a car, and I broke down in tears. <laughs> and I said, they said, is there anything I could do? I go, yeah, because I called my dad, and he goes, is there anything I do? I go, yeah, you could replace him. Please welcome Tom Goldthwait. And I made this 75-year-old guy jump through a hoop and catch Frisbees in his mouth. And uh, But when I talked to Bob Morton about that, because he saw it or <clears> something, <throat> we were talking, he goes, that was really funny. You wanted to do it on a show. I go, I pitched it to you. <laughs> oh, man. But but he was, so, like, nervous. He goes, Dave really likes dogs. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. He does like dogs. And I like dogs, but it wasn't. It was, I remember, you know, you reminded me of all these weird moments. I remember the day his dog died, and I was like, oh you know, God. what happened? And he, and he said it choked on a canned ham. And then he just walked by me, and I went, I see Pete. He <laughs> <laughs> is he joking about his Did dog that just died a few Did hours really ago? <laughs> joke on a can No. <laughs> but what it, what made me laugh was the dog had just died a few hours ago, and I thought, he's already making jokes about it. I guess we can make jokes about it. But what inspired you? Like, that first – I want to get back to this – you know, what, what you've got to the... watch this first performance because you are. Well, if you want to see something nutty or, or, I mean, I guess I haven't watched that in years, but there's an appearance on the Arsenio Hall show. Right. Where I just, like, I hadn't seen it. I was doing a show with my friend, Caitlin Gillen. She played it while we were doing hosting. And I hadn't, in my mind, it's like, yeah, I remember I went on Arsenio and I smashed up some things. That was kind of funny. You spray painted <laughs> some stuff. <laughs> but it's way, it, it's <laughs> like, I would have had me arrested. It was just like, <laughs> Spray painting Paramount sucks on the backdrop, <laughs> and then I put my foot through a three thousand dollar monitor. I had these Doc oh, Martens. Great. I just smashed up the whole thing, and and because uh, there's the reality of it is, is that was the weird thing. Is like the nettier I got, it, people think, oh, you're banned. It wasn't. The, you know, Arsenio wrestled me to the ground, and as I'm on the ground, he whispers in my ear, he goes. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is no, there is no great. over the top. Yeah. And you yeah. also <laughs> didn't you set Jay Leno's guest chair on fire yeah, at one yeah, point? Yeah. I and mean, that's, that's what late night was about to me. It was breaking all the rules and doing right. stuff like that. I don't know if anybody does. I don't know. I what? What would the uh, the? I was going to say twenty four hour cycle, but it's really our news cycle. I think. They there's nothing nutty on talk shows, but they just look for that quote that can fuel either the left or right to be irate. From right, the right, that, that right. That just seems to be the equivalent of that now because that's gone away. Well, we're in a political news cycle, so when yeah. and, you know, and, yeah. and, and so they don't care if someone drops their pants or pulls a <clears> life. No, but out. it's a strange comedy political news cycle. Like when I was writing mono- right, when I was right. writing monologue oh for Jay God. or for Dave, yeah, it was oh maybe my. a month or two, and uh, then you'd be off to the next thing and off to the insane. next thing. It's so insane. So we're in like, this. But you'll you write like a good joke about something, and right? It's gone. I, I, and then yeah. It's, but now it's, we're still writing. It. Now it's dominating the news cycle all the time, yeah. and it's an interesting place for comedy. It's like, well, do you just keep doing those jokes, or now do you take it to a different place? And I don't well, have the answer to that. I just know. I think, I think everybody's kind of burned out at this point. And you've got to really – I don't know. If I were in a writer's room, I'd really be thinking about that. Like, you well, know. Uh, you know, and it, w- to, to, to promote myself, uh, you know, the, the, that was the thing on the – so many people do that so well, mm-hmm. political stuff. You know, how do I do that w- w- with a, a fresh take? You know, I mean, like I really did like Twilight Zone and some of the – favorite episodes is like well this is really about the red scare and this is about racism and this is a but you didn't know it because it was about or you could obviously if you but but if you, you thought about what you're watching you would but he, he would couch it in aliens and fantasy figures mm-hmm. uh the devil you know the devil makes a cameo in one of those. but uh so so that that's that's what I do on the new show, and 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 and, I, and people see I'm I'm really bad at self promotion. People seem to like the shows. The well, Keckner, David, David Keckner, that he's was, in that playing a Trump like character. Well, yeah, but of it's some like, kind. But I actually didn't. But this is thing. we should we should set up the show that this is this is a comedy show, anthology series, anthology series like the Twilight Zone, right. but funny. But like, but like, so uh, self-contained episodes, but with I didn't different want a, cast, a completely different cast, every episode, right, and, and different genres and different styles, <clears throat> like and the, the goal being laughter, 
Uh, I don't know. It's the same goal as I've had as a performer. Uh, you know, it was. It's always like you know. I, I think in that article. No, in an article, I told a story about you. Know, Robin Williams was my best pal, and and we were went to a, a, having a dinner, and and he's on, and I'm like, in a kind way, I'm like, you know, you don't have to entertain this. Everybody here loves you already, and they already think you're one of the funniest people in the whole wide world, mm. and. Uh, and he's like, really? You think the whole world? I go, yes, you're like Chaplin, you know? And he's like, and and I said, you know, you want everyone to love you, and I want everyone to go, did you hear what he said? Did you see what he did? I go, your form of neuroses is way more lucrative than my form of neuroses. <laughs> you know? So that's what the show is. But like we are saying, like, uh, to so that's so wait. What I just want to connect this to your early stand up then. So right. you're pretty much still doing the same thing, just in different areas. Is that yeah? In I your think in so. that early stand up, we're getting back to this first piece on YouTube. Is the idea that you were making fun of stand up yeah, comedy? Yeah, hundred percent. Because I was like a kid. You know, my diet when I was starting at nine years old was watching people like George Carlin, and mm-hmm. then then Python came along, and Steve Martin, and Andy Kaufman, and Brother Theodore, and mm-hmm. so. So I had already kind of was such a comedy head when I was a kid and and people who were craftsmen, but I kind of knew that I didn't want to do that. So so I started making fun of comedy and then I ended up getting paid (laughs) to be a comedian. (laughs) I became the very thing I was trying to make fun of. and, And in your head, so to make fun of comedy, what was this character that you created for yourself? What was Well it wasn't originally it wasn't like one guy, it was just like, Well, wouldn't it be funny? If I go up there and I'm nervous and I'm crying, and I'm like, <laughs> it feels really and screaming. It feels really well, but then they all kind of just merge. So it'd be that. That was one. It's like, thank you very much. It's nice to be here, and I'm in tears. And it's like, it's not nice to be here. And then I read a real dear John letter, <laughs> and the crowd's all awkward and weird. And then I start doing stand up. You know, my wife is so fat. You know, how fat is she? I told you I don't even have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Can we listen to just the beginning of it? Do you uh, mind, or would that be too painful for you? Uh, we can. Uh, uh, I can just put it up it, here. It is painful, I'm sure, for me. My next guest is one of the strangest comedians that we have seen in a long while. He <laughs> worked regularly Dave, at the Comedy Connection in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, also at the comic strip right here in New York City, making his network television debut this evening. Please welcome Mr. Bob Goldthwaite. Bob. Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob. Bob, not Bobcat. So that is my debut. Wow, look at that hair. Savers, savers, savers. <laughs> savers, savers, savers. Savers, savers, savers. It feels real good. Thank you very much. Do you remember this guy? Well, this is probably the longest I've watched myself. Thank you very much. It feels real good. Thank you very much. I haven't said it anything yet. I remember this. I love this. I love that this was just stopping television right. in its tracks. <laughs> Ronald Reagan is okay. So okay, Ronald Reagan's so old he's got jelly, jelly beans, beans in his, his face. face. You might not. <laughs> you might find this surprising. I don't remember that bit. Uh, no, is but so it's, it's funny. But it's so rem- disruptive to yeah, normal yeah. television. Sure. That, that's what I loved about the show. It's what I loved about yeah. you. Is this? You would you turn this on? You're like, what the fuck what am I happened? watching? Yeah, this is not so, what was on. Now we have television like this on Adult Swim and in other places. Right. But back then, it was really a revolutionary act to go out and do something Thanks. like that. It was kind of. It's funny now in hindsight, like to 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 be doing that stuff and then. You know, and 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 yeah, people were mad at me a lot, <laughs> and also, and then like going off and making shakes the clown, which I think normally the next step for a comedian would have been to do a movie based on the persona that they people mm-hmm. knew. And I did a guy who was just—it wasn't that character; it was just an alcoholic clown. <laughs> in clown universe, <laughs> yeah, in this clown universe. Who, who? I'm really kind of making fun <clears throat> of. Uh, a lot of things, you know, uh, even recovery movies and, you know, and, and, and it's a noir film set in Palookaville. And 
you know, there was very few people that liked that movie when mm-hmm. it came out. I remember at my premiere having walkouts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt but that at the time, we're happy. the same age, and I felt right. like you were talking to me oh, and nice. my friends who were oh, sitting nice. around drinking, drinking schlitz yeah. and, and, <laughs> and smoking <laughs> bad weed. <laughs> uh, exactly. I wish I right. I have exactly. A, I have a, Not I have a, part of the system. I have a, 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 a schlitz, like uh, a Hawaiian shirt. Do you? But there it's you not go. like new. It's it's it's, it's really <laughs> probably four I was years a, old. I was a Knickerbocker man. Just really for the Knickerbocker. Yeah. Knickerbocker. We have that to take a, a, we have to take a break right now. All right, we're gonna be right back with right. Bob. Go play. Bob Not Goldplay. Goldplay. <laughs> Mr. Bob Not Goldplay. Catpot. Think of all the weird things found in cars. I'm not talking about your garden variety, petrified French fries or melted crayons. I'm talking about live snakes, bizarre trinkets, the kind of stuff that just makes you wonder about it, folks. Another thing that will make you wonder, but in a good way, are continental belts. Bet you didn't know they're OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE on a majority of BMWs and BWs. Now Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series. Belts that are fanatically engineered for the perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. Hey, you get enough surprises working on cars and trucks, a belt should not be one of them. Go with the Continental OE Technology Series Multi-V Belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit OETechnologySeries.com. All right, I just want to take a moment to tell you about a new show we have here on Podcast One, No Excuse with John Tapper. Shut it down and listen to John, the award-winning hospitality legend, as he brings his straight talk and unapologetic approach to daily topics and current events. You don't want to miss his latest interview with Adam Carolla, so download No Excuses every Tuesday on Podcast One, podcastone.com, and Apple Podcasts. Also remember to rate and review. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, welcome back to Spike's Car Radio. We're here with Bob Goldthwaite. And, uh, you can call me Bobcat. I like that. He, hey, Dave called me Bob. That was I, I, I didn't pick up on that the first time. His I new show, is, wait, let me pitch, Let me get your show out. Misfits and Monsters, in the new anthology series premiering Wednesdays on True TV. Set us up with this thing. Well, you know what's funny? You were, we started talking about the Keckner episode. And okay. That, that's a good example of, of try, and, and, and you were talking about the, the cycle of political humor. So, that episode is set in the 70s, and, you know, I, I think, like, SNL does a fine enough job. Everybody does a great job, but I didn't want to do uh, a guy in a wig doing Trump. It's in the 70s. <laughs> he's he's a used car salesman who's who pe- he does his own commercials, and people love him, and— uh, and he, because he, 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 he's a straight shooter, and he shoots from the hip, and the, they decided to run him for president. And the candidate's <laughs> like, I mean, the campaign manager's like, well, is there anything we should know? He goes, well, I cheated on my first wife. And it's like, well, that's what first wives are for. Anything <laughs> else? Yeah, I'm a werewolf. Uh, a werewolf? Yeah. But uh, I also ate a toddler when I was a werewolf. But it only happens, you know, <clears throat> when I'm really mad. And he's like, well, no one's perfect. So right. this episode's hung in this world where. This character, it is about, like, what we accept as normal and stuff, you know. So I don't want to ruin the episode, but it Keckner sounds was great. awesome, too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he's I, super funny. And, I, just li- I just like And he's big... crying in this episode. He actually breaks down in tears. Really? Yeah, because it, it gets disclosed. And he's like, <laughs> yes, I'm a werewolf, but I'm an American first. <laughs> Keckner brought it. He's just sobbing. It was really, like, he did, like, the wow. quote. Wow. The checkers speech. Uh, that's fan- <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so each week I, don't you love that they, nowadays that there's room for a show like this on TV? They, they, yeah. They, Ten, I mean, fifteen years ago, you couldn't pitch that show. Yeah, I it's did too pitch small it like seven years ago when people were like, uh, it was fascinating because the, they would say, well, you know, they would give me a reason why they're not going to do right, it. Right, right. And then they would say, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> and I was like, that's really true. And I go, no, that's that's what I want to do. <laughs> that's why I pitched and then it, the, motherfucker. And then the me. Because I think there used to be people going, you don't like that. It could be uh, – it's a uh, reality show. Uh, it's a challenge with chimps and a cage, and they don't know they're being filmed. You know, so mm-hmm. – <laughs> so, but <laughs> whatever. I don't know what that is, real chimps. But, but uh, 
but I just didn't have plan B, and then I went out with this series. And I do give it up for true because it's like, it's like, hey, we're doing a show. Uh, uh, it, it, what's the show? Uh, it's a Bobcat Goldway. Oh, wait, what's he playing? No, he's not in it. Oh, well, who's in it? Uh, well, that changes every week. Oh, what's it about? Not quite sure because we're going to re- <laughs> we're going to have new episodes each week. So, you know, I, I I give it up to them for for letting me have the freedom to to make this. Thing. Yeah, they, now, usually people, they get afraid of something different. That's what happens in yeah, that situation. Yeah, I think they're you know they, they're programming. They've got a lot of uh, neat shows that are uh, eclectic. You know, mm-hmm. so so I don't know. Will I find an audience? I don't know. But it's it's it it was it's <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> That's a positive <laughs> attitude. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was digging back here into your late night stuff, and it, it, I read that you were offered a talk show on CBS at one point. Yeah, that was weird. I was <clears> what on, year is this? I was on, it was when Sajak had a show. It's even creepier than that. God, I forgot about that show. I was on Sajak's show. I go, I, go, I go back into the dressing room, and this executive, and I'm not trying to be coy. I don't remember the guy's name. He's like... Uh, <clears throat> He's like, you want the show? <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> this happens a lot at CBS. Isn't that weird? You, the, you can talk to a lot of comedians who have this story. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I know a few <laughs> myself brutal. who have that story. That terrible? It's brutal. They were like, hey, you did really well. Oh, thanks. You want no, the show? I had, a, I had a late night show on Fox for three years. My executive would come in all the time going, you know, we're looking for your replacement. And he'd laugh. And I'd go, what the fuck, dude? I got to do a show That's tonight. supposed to motivate you. <laughs> you I just want to be honest. Now, they, you know, they ended up signing Artie Lang. I said, well, you know, Artie's oh. hilarious, but that heroin problem, I think, is he's not going <laughs> to wow. make it. So I felt comfortable. But uh, so many, and I won't name names. Was that supposed to like, goose you to do a good job, or was that? <clears throat> you know, I, I don't, mo- I, I like <laughs> straight and dope information. Like, you can tell me everything. The good news and the bad news, I'm fine with do all you, of that. I, I prefer to live in that environment, especially in that job. Because I like to know where, you know, what it, it motivates on? me. I like to know what's going on. I would prefer but, that it not be but secret. But that's not their manipulation paradigm. They like to try to <clears throat> F with your head. You, you know, I knew, I had, I had just climbed that ladder and realized how impossible it was to get there. And I knew it, it was going to be very difficult for them. It's insanity. Right? It, it's not going to work. I, I think, uh, so wait, getting back to say, Jack. of a Boston club that I'm not going to mention where the doorman <laughs> flashed me his, uh, his heater one night. <laughs> was it his gun yeah. or his dick? That's gonna help. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how warm his penis was. But, but like, as a joke, he shows me his gun. And right? He's like, you gonna be funny tonight? <laughs> like, That's your kind of humor. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> so wait, Sage. So this Sage. Jack, what, first of all, did he have an eleven thirty show or twelve thirty yeah. show? I don't. I, don't I think it was eleven thirty. I think he was gonna. So this is before Letterman or anybody else, right? No, There's... no. Letterman's on. Everybody. He's on. It's like he's he's gonna be. I don't know what. I mean, there was all that Michigan. I don't. I don't remember where. But yeah, that was gonna be their answer. Say Jack. Get, <laughs> get me Say Jack. I like that Say Jack. I do too. On a game <laughs> show. I like that Say Jack. Uh, as, guy, a, as a late nice night guy. show. Yeah. No, not at all. And then I was. Uh, and why didn't you do it? Why? Why, why didn't I you want to do it? Just the idea of talking to people and and the, the grind and the right and. Yeah, I, I don't. I couldn't have done that. Really? I think. Yeah, I remember this around. I was on. We're talking about talk shows. I was on Dennis Miller the night Johnny Carson retired. Oh wow! So there is no one, and I go, Dennis. There is no one watching us right now. I go. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> and I and I took my pants off. And I I mean took all my pants. I I was nude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I ran around the set. God, you know, it's funny. It's like I have a a fondness for Dennis. You know, and mm-hmm. and 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 obviously I don't see the world. The I used same. to write for Dennis. So yeah, and update. I don't see the world uh, the same way. But I do. And I did a documentary on my friend Barry Crimmins, who wrote for for Dennis. And uh, and Dennis didn't do the podcast. He could have been busy. I mean, not the podcast, but he didn't do the documentary, and he could have been busy and stuff. But but it's funny they couldn't have been further opposed. But Barry only had fond memories of Dennis, uh, of standing up and doing the right thing when yeah. when the when the shit hit the fan. For, yeah. for 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 Barry. So so uh, I think I think I think Dennis was possibly worried that I was going to do some kind of hatchet job, but it was it was going to be nothing like that because Dennis was a guy who would. Put me on his show and right, and, and, right, and, you know, so. yeah, and what you know, it's funny when you talk about politics and comedy. <clears throat> 
It's, I don't know what your opinion about this stuff is, but I've always considered writer, the writers' rooms I've been in, you know, not you know we get we get called left wing and liberal or right, right, as right. like as nothing. It they, we seem to be kind of like social judges that are writing about shit that just looks wrong, whatever right, side it's on, right? Right. right. And, and, and then you you. You, you talk about this. You, you put something on your Instagram or you make a joke and it's like, oh, you Hollywood liberal guy. <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. OK, I'm from Massachusetts. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, if you want to know, I'm an independent so because yeah. I don't want to be part of anything. I just right. want to write about anything that right. kind of, right. you, know, you know, looks wrong to me and, and try to be funny. And with how it. upset would they have been when I was doing my Obama drone material? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They what go, is that? Uh, well, I was just making fun of it. Oh, you know, right. I wasn't a fan of it. Right. You know, and they, they didn't seem to get, you know. I, no. No, it, it, it's just a way of trying to shut us well, up, I the, think. And, uh, the idea that a writer's room, you know, you go back to those old Carson monologues, and that was where I was exposed to political satire. Right. And he did it in a way where he, it, was, it wasn't like he was trying to be fair to both sides. What he was trying to do was point out the hypocrisy and the stupidity. And exactly. that's comic's job. Yes. Uh yeah, it's just different times, you know. It's 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 uh, we're all wondering how is this all going to shake out, you know. I mean, um, but as far as comedy, like that that one comment uh, that I get all the time, if I happen to say something political or make a, a political joke, once I made in a, in a show, this car show I do, I, I made a joke off. I don't even remember it, but something about uh, Trump University. Right. And, and the, you know, it airs a few months later. I'm just getting all this shit on Twitter. <laughs> like, what the fuck did I say? I don't remember. And then I and I call the producer over. They go, yeah, you made a joke about your guy said he didn't, didn't really get a good education. So I'm like, oh, where was it? Trump, <laughs> Trump University. University. It, yeah, it yeah. seemed like a joke at the time. It was in the news, I guess, that day. And they, how dare you use your platform. Your platform. To tell us what to do. And I'm like, uh, I, I wasn't, I first wasn't. of all, but... Isn't everybody using their platform? Uh, by that rule, right. who gets to say anything? Just the guy who mows lawns? Who has... Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. it's. But ver- you could say that about him, too. You're using your platform <laughs> in my yard every You're- two days uh, to come here and tell me how to think. Yeah, I and, get... And I think that's a bunch of bullshit. I get uh, has-been and Hollywood elite. Right. Person, <laughs> person, <laughs> often, in the, often in the same it's line. It's a European pancake. Yeah, One right, on each yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, when... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're kind of if you're making headlines, whoever you are, if you're making headlines and this looks wrong, and if the reporting feels wrong, whatever it is, political celebrity, whatever it is, yeah. a comedians feel compelled to start writing jokes about that. Like, because hey, this is how I see it. This is just your brain. It's yeah, not even like you, you can't you, help it. Did you see the photo of a selfie that Dylan took a couple of days ago? Uh, yeah, right. With the, I saw that the Spock impersonator. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on Hollywood and he, Boulevard, and I'm looking. He doesn't have social media, so no. I don't know what the selfie was for. But it's the Spock impersonator. The guy looks really like, and I'm thinking like, it's just it, it, when I saw, it, I was like, we're gonna be okay. Like, <laughs> like it was so yeah. insane. Like Bob Dylan's like, hey, pull over, you know. And he's like, it's gonna Leonard, be fine. Leonard, Leonard, it's me. You know, and, 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 he just and, came from the weed store. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I saw, hey, let's stop here too. Hey, I saw Leonard. <laughs> he's looking good. He's dead. Maybe <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> and my friend Rob goes, maybe the, the Leonard Nemo impersonation. Like this Dylan guy is good. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's spot on. You know who else called attention? That was uh, Mr. Judd Apatow. And you're working with him on something, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. What I'm are you guys the, cooking the, up together? The documentary that I did, Call Me Lucky, on my friend Barry Crimmins, who passed away, uh, we, we're making that into uh, a narrative film. Uh, so Judd and I are writing it. He's producing. I'm directing it. But it, it, it's, does Judd does he have time for all this stuff? It's funny. It's been the other way. I've been working on all this stuff, and he's like, "Oh, hey man, when are we gonna start working?" Which I thought wow, was funny. Good. I was like, that's "I was good. like, wow, that's weird." He's yeah. snapping the whip. But I just uh, I did a, a I did two pilots this year, my series, and two stand up specials, all behind the scenes directing. Wow. But, so uh, I really did think I'd be doing boat shows right around now. So, uh, <laughs> like, like some part of me is like, I don't know. I think it's. You know, I mean, I guess I should slow down, but it's 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 I'm truly fulfilled and having a blast. I mean, it's not all easy, but 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 I I, I love this work. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes people think like when you're behind the camera that you're settling and it's like, no, this is what I really love to do. Um, I as a comedian, I still think I probably would have tried comedy as a kid. 
but I I I I really just wish I was making more stories earlier because because it's really fun. Yeah, once you've been on that ride, I mean, I think it's also smart in this business too to just open up a bunch of different revenue streams <laughs> because you, you never know <laughs> what is going to happen. You, you gotta know, have you a can't portfolio, be, right? You can't be in front of the camera. I can direct. You can't do that. I, I can write, and that really right. does help you, you know, stay working. I think writing is a biggie too, like the leverage. People, you know, like I have a lot of friends. <laughs> my buddy said to me, "I go, I, and he's my same age, and he's super talented." And I go, "I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm so fortunate that I get to do all this." And he goes, "I do. You write. <laughs> <laughs> I just talk about it." <laughs> I go, "Oh, okay. is that why?" Yeah, I think it does. You know, because uh, after I did the first movie, I got in the Sundance. Uh, I went off and wrote 11 more screenplays. Wow. Not even like these are going to get made. I just wrote, and, and the same thing even on the series, I just kept writing episodes, you know, some that'll get made, some that won't. But I, 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 I just, one, I like to get the stories out of me. And two, they are a cachet, you know, uh, versus a pitch. Now, the problem is if you're trying to make your living doing that, that mm-hmm. that's a whole other thing. I've been fortunate to to have a day job to so that affords me to make movies. <laughs> and what's the day job? I was doing stand up, you know, for years. So you you're know? still you're still out there. Well, no, I started to stand up uh again, but uh not 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 to make money. I just been going up just cuz I I have talk show appearances coming up and and, and it's like up. A, you know, it's like a, a muscle, you know. And it's right, not right. even like so I'm, what do you do when you go up to prepare for a talk show? Do you write jokes for yourself, or you're telling your stories? I go or? up and I, I tell stories, but then like like something will come up, or something that will 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 like oh maybe that'll work, you know? Like like uh, like I was talking about how this guy said uh, recently that he was you know I'm gonna unfollow you, like that's the worst <laughs> thing you can say, and I'm like. <laughs> I used to play arenas. <laughs> yeah. Millions of people have followed me. This, this train left about 20 years ago. Right, I, you know, uh, right so, through the exit doors. So that came up while I was on stage, and I was like, oh, hey, maybe that'll be a good panel joke. You know, that's the thing. It's just, oh, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, because you know, they really feel like that's a threat, like you really care about that. <laughs> I used to like you. I used to like you. And now I'm unfollowing you. I'm yeah, unfollow- that's what you're supposed to do with people you don't like. You're supposed yeah. to do that. Yeah. You don't need to tell me. Just do it. Go ahead and do it. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's there's, true. There's, right? like, there's... I've had a couple people I've unfollowed, and I just try to, I go, oh, man, I, I hope they don't ego surf and realize that. <laughs> yeah. I've just had friends. I'm only, the only social media I'm on Instagram, but have you ever had friends that just post too much stuff? And you yeah. Know, I, 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 you're clogging my feed. <laughs> I just, you know who's doing that? Uncle Paul. My Uncle Paul. <laughs> That's creepy Paul. Not, Cre- creepy not Zucker, Paul. man. That's different Paul. Folks, you gotta, if you're, if you're listening, Paul. Fall, follow Paul Ferriston, my creepy Uncle Paul. <laughs> he's my father's older brother, and he's taking these... Uh, Bizarre trannies and teenage girls in their <laughs> underwear. <laughs> no, hold on. That's not. <laughs> That's my characterization. The, the, the photographs have a very unique look. Wouldn't you agree? He like could he really took a pic- take a picture, but the way he takes it. Well, he took a picture of my son that's never been replicated. I've n- he made him look like a, a kid that was that the devil had entered his soul. <laughs> and well, it show pop, show and pop some of these winners. <laughs> and then and and he's been. I don't know if you're. Are you following him, Zuckerman? Now is he? Is, I am going to follow. Is him Is he right a now. photographer? Or is I he... know he was. <laughs> it's his composition that's unusual. <laughs> Technically he... proficient, but the composition is. <laughs> There's un- a picture of Uncle Paul. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Paul. If, if you're, I'm sure you're going to hear about uh, this, but he's uh, like, he's. <laughs> they may be victim pictures. Yeah, that's... I, I have not called him yet about the yeah. pictures. Um, yeah. He we he comes from a family of professional photographers. Okay. So his brother taught photography at Columbia University, right. and then is a notable photographer from Texas. Uh, Timothy, his brother, taught at Yale <laughs> photography, and he likes right. to shoot. Uh, human-made so he's, disasters. He's like, uh, and Paul, I think, wanted to. Now that he's retired, he was in computers. He's like, um, he's like yeah. Just- Wow. So, so, <laughs> I mean, hey. That yeah, looks yeah. like Tom Segura a little bit yeah, in yeah. that picture. So it's like, um, it's, 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 you know, Andy uh, Warhol had a brother. There, yeah, there, there. So we, we need to check his basement. 
Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, getting back to the post, what's up with his post? Like, just, while I was away, yeah, yeah, before yeah. I was reading this article about you, know, the LA Times, suddenly I'm on my Instagram feed. He would, he posted 90 pictures, and they were all these uh, these yeah. photographs, which are very cool. And they, he's, they, they, he's they, like, they, I don't know what's going that on. Looks, <laughs> that looks like it's his a lot son like, Matthew, hey, but. smile. Anyway, Smell follow the- follow Paul, and maybe we'll be following Smile him into the penitentiary. And, I don't know. And sniff the rag. Right. That's great. <laughs> That's what I said. He's documenting all of his crimes in real time. <laughs> no, yeah. he's not. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I will say they're fascinating, those photos. They're, they ha- they're, they're got, distinct, aren't they? There's something odd. There's a real look to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I think he's doing is he's going back through his files now. He's just discovered Instagram, and he's, he's oh, cherry-picking he's shots up. over the years because uh, – uh, my my nephew Matthew's on there, and I, I saw a picture of him like at five years old, and he's it's already really in college. He's, so. he's Unintentional he's Arbus is weird. Uh, Unintentional Arbus, Arbus. No, yeah, Unintentional. Diane Arbus. I yeah. think you're right. There's a, there's a little of that. No, but there. Arbus was the, the the subjects were odd. It's like these yes. are r- regular people that, that are made. That, odd. that are made. Odd. <laughs> no. He does have a style. You he can't does. deny it. Yeah. Well, maybe there's something <laughs> there. Paul Ferriston. <laughs> Follow. <laughs> Let's get him ten thousand followers. Style. Yeah. It's like. Um, but I'm saying that Andy Warhol's brother was like, "Hey, I can I can paint chickens." He painted soup cans. He was a- <laughs> Do you think there's even room for a, a, a new photographer that could be an artist that anybody would care about with so many people taking pictures? Yeah, I think I it's wanted to go just... into photography when I was 12. That's all I wanted to really? be was a professional photographer. And, and the guy who I uh, interned with at the wedding photography place on the very first morning, Saturday morning, <laughs> so he, goes, this, he goes, "Where is this script?" He goes, "It's in Brockton." <laughs> you looking up at the... my dad set it up. <laughs> he goes, looking at the wedding photographer. <laughs> this guy is. Cool. Cool. My dad totally set up. He goes, this guy's going to teach you how to take pictures and do the rest of it. Timmy, you know, did some of it. But this guy goes, hey, kid, you want to be poor for the rest of your life? And I go, <laughs> <laughs> I go what? what? He goes, don't be a photographer. Because uh, I like that <laughs> he sounds like me. <laughs> you're going to be like me. You're going to be poor. He was like you. And that was it. It took me one Saturday morning where I went, well, I'm not doing that. I really hope he took you to a bar. <laughs> no, he didn't. You want to learn how to take pictures? <laughs> I, I, I went in at 10. I was done by noon. And I went home and I put the camera away for a while. I was just doing a thing with uh, – uh, I, I did two things that Richard Donner had directed. And, and one day on one of the things, he was like, kid, you want to direct? I go, yeah. He goes – Come to my trailer. And I'm like, wow, Richard Donner's going to tell me how to direct. You know, this is great. And he throws me a pillow. He goes, take a lot of naps. <laughs> and then he fell asleep in front of me. It was really weird. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. And I just saw him. That had to be 20 years ago. That I just saw great. him, and I reminded him of that story. And he goes, it's true. I'm like, I'm like, and then I'm, he went to bed again. I, I've never been on a set that just said right. Bobcat needs to take a nap. Well, we are out of time. I'm getting oh, the wrap-up sign. Thanks it was a lot of on. fun having you here. Bobcat Goldthwait's new show is Misfits and Monsters. It's on Wednesdays. Uh, true TV. Yeah. It's as funny as he is. Well, Zuckerman. If you've been injured in a, a bird accident <laughs> or Lime. a lime scooter accident or uh, – Any or other way. Any other you, way. You'll call me. You call Zuckerman where? What's the name of your firm again? Carpenter, Zuckerman, You're killing and it. Rowley. And if you want to just harass him, harass him on Instagram at The Real Zuckerman. And I'm Spike Ferris. You can find me everywhere, but I'm most responsive on Instagram. And please – Please don't get on me about politics because I, I I'm going to unfollow you if you do. All right? How, how just, dare you? How dare you? Unfollow. <laughs> We're just comedians. We'll see you next week on Spike's Car Radio. Real quick before we go, here are some useful car tips you might not be aware of. A coffee filter and a little bit of olive oil can clean your interior. Removing excess weight from your car will improve gas mileage, and you can place your key fob to your chin to increase its range. That's pretty weird, right? Well, here's another tip you also might not know about. True Car also helps people get used cars. That's right. True Car isn't just for buying new cars. With their certified dealer network and nationwide inventory of nearly 1 million used cars, you'll enjoy real pricing on on actual inventory and a simpler buying experience, whether you buy new or used. And with TrueCar, users can see what others paid so they know if they're getting a good deal before they're buying. They're also more likely to enjoy a faster buying experience by connecting with TrueCar certified dealers. When you're ready to buy a new or used car, check out TrueCar and enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com.